black bean and poblano burritos. Yum. That's just one of the delicious new recipes. How about pasta primavera? That's another one that I have discovered thanks to HelloFresh. Are you ready to try America's number one meal kit? We'll get 14 free meals, including free shipping, when you use code FACE14 at HelloFresh.com slash FACE14. And welcome to episode 64 of the Face Podcast. I just realized I definitely don't think we did an intro the last one we just recorded. Uh, so just listen to this one twice. I'm Jeff Jeff. Uh, with me as always is Gavin <laughs> Gavin and Andrew Andrew. And, Yo, did we uh, not do an intro? I feel like we did. did you, we, we, we started, it started with you and uh, Eric fighting over NSYNC. Oh, was, like, yeah. Top Dog and NSYNC. And then yeah. I we said we the number. Got around to it. Did we, we, oh, we said did 63. Okay. Okay. I think so. Well, this is I 64 think, yeah. then, uh, if my math is correct. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the principles of addition uh, continue to function as uh, as uh, described to me as a child. Uh, this is episode 64 of the F*** Face podcast. And uh, I don't know about you boys. I still have three things left over to talk about from my previous list that we didn't get to because of the world's longest open water story uh, but i don't want to i don't want to monopolize the episode either so no if you guys want to talk about anything go right ahead no I, I mean if it's on par with the ocean rescue story i need i mean i just need to know everything i need okay. to know how your day is i need to have a continuation let me tell happening. you about today <laughs> this is the portion of uh of this uh this is called purple nightmare <laughs> I, I i feel like I want Andrew to guess what this is about. What do, what do you think oh. purple... That's a great idea. I, okay. I would like you both to guess. That's a great I described premise. it as a lucid waking nightmare. A purple lucid waking nightmare. I'm going to guess that you dreamt that you were on a boat and Grimace was yelling at you to go now, <laughs> is my guess. The purple nightmare. Uh, I was thinking Barney. No. <laughs> no, you're both so far off. When you so say purple off. nightmare, it was this actually a nightmare or was this an experience that was real that... You just you're just calling a nightmare. It was an experience that was so horrible it felt like a nightmare. Okay, you were oh. riding you were riding your bike and you saw a, a lovely field of lavender to your side Ooh. and you thought, oh that looks nice. And then suddenly your bike just veered into it and you rolled down a hill through lavender, <laughs> thus living a purple nightmare on the way. I down. wish. I I'm going to continue okay. off that. I'm going to guess that Jeff was trying to do his bike trick, doing a practice <laughs> run, <laughs> trying to get into it, was listening to Prince while doing so, and it went horribly wrong. <laughs> that is my second Purple Nightmare guess. I love the idea behind that. Uh, it's a little more pedestrian, unfortunately. So I thought I was going to have a good day today, and it's it's largely been a good day. I mean, What I made you think that, though? I just felt like it. I woke up in a good mood and I thought like today will be, I, I knew I had to go to the doctor. I hadn't been to the doctor in a while and I wanted to go get some blood work done and you know, just a wellness exam. So I went and got a tetanus shot and cause I figure if anybody on earth needs a tetanus shot, it's me. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, you I, did cut uh, your hand open on something. Yeah. That also, you know, you want to check your cholesterol and do all the stuff a, a man like myself has to do in his mid forties. And so, uh, I was kind of looking forward to that because it's one of those things that you, you, you put off and you put off and I was glad to finally be doing it, you know? And so, I had to I had to leave kind of early to go to the doctors, and one thing I do uh, when I have Millicent, you know, w- with joint custody, I have her half the time. So on the weeks that I have Millicent, every morning or virtually every morning, I make her uh, a smoothie because <laughs> uh, she has some specific dietary requirements, and uh, I really I've I've learned how to make this awesome smoothie that's really fun, and she seems to appreciate it, and it. It sets her up for uh, sets her up for in the right way uh, for her day. She's all full of nutrients and stuff. And uh, anyway, so I was making her smoothie. It's a What's it's a blueberry. Smoothie? It's a blueberry smoothie. It's got uh, a lot of stuff in it, but the, uh, the main ingredients are blueberry <laughs> and banana and peanut butter. And it was the yogurt uh, that was that caused the initial problem, and some honey and some other stuff. Anyway, so uh, I have this like ninja food like smoothie maker machine. And it makes like a 20 ounce smoothie. And so uh, I was talking to Emily this morning while she was getting ready for work and I was making the smoothie and putting it all together. And I crammed it a little too full of y- yogurt, which I can't stand. So when I put the <laughs> lid on, the way it works is you like fill it up, you put a lid on that's got the uh, the little 
fucking blades in it and then you stick it on the machine and it goes and it spins it all up and so when i put the blades and i pushed it down it fucking shot yogurt out uh of all the sides which if there's one thing i like less than yogurt it's it's goopy uh it's goopy yogurt coming out of the sides of a smoothie thing it was like <laughs> i i retch i'm like whoa how's it coming gross. out of the sides because i like you like at the top where you like screw it in oh okay there was too much volume and so it like squirts it's like yogurt squirt coming out of the mm -hmm. top that'd be a great way to describe it gross white yogurt squirt and i was like Whoa. so i go over uh i go over and i rinse it off and then and so the the now the the canister is a little slippery and wet right then i take it over to the smoothie machine and i put it in the smoothie machine and i get the smoothie all nice and blended and it's very purple and uh then i go over uh back to the to the kitchen sink because some more yogurt squirt has come out. And so I take the cap off and I'm like trying to just, you know, clean it up a little bit, get the yogurt squirt off of it and stuff so that it's uh, not disgusting for Millie. And I turn around with it in my hand and I guess, I guess it just wasn't holding it well enough and it was wet <laughs> and I throw the smoothie across the kitchen <laughs> oh, and no. it hits the floor and it explodes and 20 ounces of purple smoothie <laughs> makes 20 ounces of purple smoothie can cover an entire house. <laughs> <laughs> it can cover all of the floor. It can cover three different carpets. It can cover every kitchen cabinet. It can cover uh, <laughs> all of the walls. It can cover a lot of ceiling. You can paint a lot of ceiling with a 20 ounce purple smoothie. Uh, that's one of those, I don't know where to start kind yeah. of messes. Yeah. Like, which bit mm -hmm. do you clean first? It went so far, it shot across the island of my kitchen. <laughs> Gavin, you know where my, you've been to my house. So yeah. my kitchen, it shot over like the little cutout area on <laughs> across the dining room table. It covered the windows in my living room. It did like a, James McAvoy bullet binned around the wall and managed to then spin back and hit my front door, which isn't even visible from where it hit the ground. It sounds like when Mr. Bean tried to paint his flat by putting uh, a firework in a can of paint and just running <laughs> around the room. I didn't, I didn't see that, but, uh, and I just like stared at it. And Emily was leaving, and I just ran outside and said, you've got to come home. You've got to come back. She's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And she runs in. She's like, what's wrong? And I go, what do I do? And she just goes, I got to go to work. <laughs> she was like, wake up, Millie. She'll help you. And then she left because uh, she had to go to work. She had clients in the chair or whatever. Uh, I know she filmed a video of it, so you guys can see that at some point. But uh, I, I then got up Millie, and for uh, uh, 40 minutes, we cleaned purple. Per it was... <laughs> Just everywhere. Every, and every time I thought it was done, I would like move a dining room chair and realize, no, the whole seat is full of purple. And uh, I had to clean three different rugs. I had to clean the ceiling in two rooms significantly. Uh, we've got to get you a security camera or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> inside, right? And then, yeah. and then after it was all done and I got it all clean, I walked into my bedroom and I sat down and I just cried. I cried for a good <laughs> two sake. minutes. Just cried. And then I got up, I wiped off my tears, I went back in, and I made another goddamn smoothie because Millie needed her breakfast. And so I made another goddamn smoothie, and then I, and I endeavored to have a better day after that. There's always just like an underlying Wait. level of tragedy to all your funny yes. stories. Oh, it, was that today? <laughs> Did that happen today? That when happened at 9 a.m. today. <laughs> what a start. You, and you thought it was going to be a good day, which means you probably yeah. only had an hour or two of thinking it was great. Yeah. I like as well that I was expecting the blender to have fired it <gasps> out, but it was no. just you throwing you it. I fucking threw it with with like z like I threw it with like some force, dude. I I don't even know how to describe it. Was it like a Gronk spike? Like what are we talking as far as yeah angle yeah kind of like a Gronk spike? Yeah, there you go. That's a good way to describe it. Yeah, it was like Gronk spike I've never smoothie. been more shocked in my life. I was like, it was as bad, Gavin. And I, I, I recognize like, there was a story from years and years and years ago where I had a, a, my dog had diarrhea and my Roomba ran over it and it, sh it, sh it shot shit six feet up my walls, right? It, it wasn't cleaning up feces, I'll say that. So that was a bonus. But it was way more cleanup. It got way, it just, like, it laughed at the Roomba shit story and was like, I can top that easily. So in terms of grossness, it would probably Ugh. rank... 
a, a three behind the rumba shit and the half dead cow but in terms yeah. of spread it would probably be number one yeah it's a three behind those it's death is a f- easy number one in terms of difficulty cleaning up and spread yeah it was a it was a <laughs> motherfucker oh all my mail my alexa my alexa got covered just a drippy purple mess all my mail is stained purple now oh so then here's my next story regulation fart so okay. then I go to the doctor. I do all that. It's all fine. It's great. I like the doctor. He's a new doctor. I love him. Everything. Come home. I get some lunch. Have some chili killers for lunch. It's delicious. Everything's going fine. Then I have a quick little meeting, a little work meeting, and uh, sitting at my desk, having my work meeting, and uh, there's about 10 minutes to go in the work meeting, and I have a just a perfectly regulation fart. Quiet fart. So I'm, I feel comfortable doing it. I just like move my chair. You know, nobody hears it because it was silent. Nothing feels amiss. Nothing weird. As I said, it wasn't a, I didn't have to push. It wasn't a hard fart. It wasn't a wet fart. It was just a perfectly regulation fart. So I fart. Don't even think anything about it. Forget about it. Finish my business in the meeting. Get up to go to the bathroom. Feel like, oh, I should, I should do a poo now. Walk over, (laughs) pull down my pants, sit down, realize there is a pile of shit in my pants. (laughs) No, there's no way. How do you not feel it? I shit my pants and like a like a little cow pie, a little like like a cookie no. ca- cow pie, and I just didn't feel it. I don't understand. I don't oh. understand. How? I don't Man. understand. And it was like it was an it was like oh no, it wasn't like a streak or a little bubble. It was like there was weight, you know. It like weighed my underwear down. And I don't know how I don't know how it happened. I don't know how a regulation fart had had non regulation results, and I don't know how I didn't discover it at all until it was way too late so that was a quick trip that was a shower and laundry <laughs> if, jeff, if jeff didn't take a shit it would still be in his pants he would have known maybe It'd maybe maybe there. i had to check and make sure this very chair i'm sitting in didn't have shit in. it didn't it was fine the pants contained it but uh but yeah how much time passed between regulation fought and shit discovery 10 to 11 minutes okay <laughs> So not not long. enough time for it to sort of go hard. Oh. <laughs> no, no, it was still pretty goopy. Oh, I'm I'm honestly blown away that after oh. the so to date when we're recording this, the episode where Andrew rips a Homer in his words at the end of the last episode <laughs> that came out yesterday. I am blown away, Andrew, that you had no repercussions from that wet, oh, disgusting none. noise. Oh, I man. couldn't. It was funny. I think I I texted it to you guys. I couldn't figure out that evening. I was just. It was like a home run derby in my ass all <laughs> night. It was just. I couldn't. I couldn't stop. And I was like, "What is going on? This is irregular." And then the next day after we recorded, I had a fiber one bar, and then it just it was like throwing another log in the fire. Like it came back, and I was like, "Oh, I ate like three of these that night." That's what caused. Uh, so this. you were fibered up. I was and fibered that, up. And, that was what and was it was unleashing non regulation yes. fonts. Yes. God damn, dude. By the oh. way, the audience universally <laughs> loves your farts. Congratulations. Huge I mean, win for Fuckface. Zero, zero negative comments. R E Andrew's butt. I was amazed and, 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 and yeah. it was joyous to see. I'm I think sorry. we've got a good audience. I think we've got yeah. one. It's not well, an audience that, like, uh, you know, turns them off in disgust. It's it's an audience full of embrace, <gasps> even with such a wet, disgusting. Heinous. <laughs> speaking of uh, speaking of audience, uh, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. Oh, by the way, I should just say I- I'm now terrified because I-, I I don't think I can trust my farts anymore. This is uncharted fart territory for me. <laughs> if I can't trust a regulation fart, what, can I ever leave the house again? <laughs> yeah, I mean, would that be would that be a fart that you would have? taken the yeah. gamble on in Anywhere. an airport or something yeah wow anyway yeah, it was a regulation <laughs> fart dangerous that's Just a so normal dangerous. bog standard <laughs> regulation fart you gotta figure that out i know that's gonna, that's gonna get you yeah dude i'm not excited <laughs> about it uh but anyway speaking of the audience i was i wanted to talk about the twins i feel so bad because we did the fuck my i feel so bad that they're probably gonna eat my condiment i feel really bad about that because they What's did the happened? salads you know the twins right uh, they, uh, the comment leavers, and I'm going to say comment receivers after this because they got a lot of love. They, uh, they took our four salads 
and <sighs> they made them, and then they did a salad taste test to determine the, twins, what the best like salad the, was. Like the girls? Yeah, the girls. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know that anyone had made them. Yeah, they made them. They videotaped a review. And they put it all up on Twitter. They had pictures. By the way, mine was, no offense to you guys, mine was easily the most aesthetic. If it wasn't the best tasting, it was easily how do I f- the most how do I find aesthetic. This? Where do I look at these? I'll send uh, it. You can link it to you. Uh, I appreciated that they acknowledged mine had great spirit. I feel like that yes. was what I was going for in the, in the dinner Zimmer salad. Definitely not a taste. Uh, you, uh, you, one of the twins liked yours best and one of the twins liked mine best. I don't think anyone liked mine. I think they appreciated it. They appreciated yeah, it. yeah, no, no, the, the, the spirit, as I said, I appreciated the spirit call it for it. As far as taste goes, it's a disaster. <laughs> so were they ranked? <laughs> they did. Yes, they yeah. ranked them. It's a great video. I'll send it to you. Yeah, yeah send it, it to a, me. I want to see. It was, it was awesome. They also, uh, they also uh, set the uh, waffle bomb on fire and, uh, and smelled it in a video not too long ago as well. They may, they're, they're making better content out of our content than we are. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they'll make all the condiments. That's what I'm saying. I feel terrible. I didn't design mine with the thought anyone else would try it. Um, I feel bad. <laughs> I mean, yours is also just atrocious, Gavin. I feel bad about that, too. It's not a good My tater condiment? tot condiment. Yeah, it wasn't good. It's cocktail sauce. There's nothing wrong with it. And not for tater tots. It was a bad combo it's, for tater tots. It's weird on a tot. I'll give you that. It but is. It's not, it's not <laughs> terrible in general. Hey, do y'all think I could be invited back to the Slack at some that's, point? I'm so Speaking glad that you mentioned that, Jeff. Yeah. I'm so... Because that's on my note. I wanted to bring up the fact that... So I sent... Uh, in the episode that came out, we talked about the state <laughs> songs, the ranking of those, yeah. and the, the motion picture song. I posted those, and then Gavin made a joke saying tennessee spelt 10 because tennessee has 10 state songs yeah. and my original i thought was gavin should be removed from this channel for that joke that was <laughs> which then made me realize oh my god jeff still isn't in the slack and so it's been a long had- time maybe we just have a one in one out rule from this point <laughs> <laughs> well here's the thing you left out a protest so i thought it would be unfair of us to then drag you back in out of your protest so if you're out of protest we'd love to have you back I don't uh, want to speak for everyone, but if you're willing to come back. The regulation Zimmer looks freaking delicious. Yeah, because I make good ass salads. <laughs> that looks like an amazing, <laughs> mine looks like a fruit salad. That looks like too much apple in there. I know how to make a fucking salad, man. I eat them. I love them. <laughs> Raymond's looks, ooh. Yeah, yeah dude, it's a lot of different. The blueberries next to the meat just looks a bit weird. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> it's not a good salad. Oh, Nick's looks healthy. You take that Something avocado healthy. off of Nick's and it looks delicious. It's well, a good then, salad. I mean, well, if you like avocado, I understand that it would be it would be a bonus. But if you don't, it's a it's a big detractor. So you want <sighs> back in the Slack, Jeff? Just to clarify, we can add you back. We'd love to have you back. I have yeah, a question though. Great. Does Jeff get to see all the stuff we wrote while he was gone? I think so. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. up to him if he wants to scroll. Up I don't. Numbers. I don't think I do. I think. I think I, it starts where I join. I think I lose oh, really? all my progress. That that was a lot covered that we should probably fill. You. Maybe we could just repaste it all. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe it wasn't for me to see. Hmm. <laughs> uh, well, that's uh, that's everything I had on my list. Now it's all I'm left with is the queries and insights, which I was just gonna pepper in uh, as we uh, as we went. Uh, one of those, of course, was the the twins. I have a question for you guys. Let me ask you guys a question. Okay. When I was in Mexico on the island, there's a rule uh, in Mexico. It's it's in every toilet in the in on the island. They said, please please don't flush toilet paper. It's uh, it flushes few, as little toilet paper as possible. It's an island, and the plumbing isn't great. And yeah. so they, they want you to like throw it in a, w- a waste bin. Um, and that got me thinking, what if every person on the island flushed toilet paper at the exact same time? <laughs> would it blow up? I think it, all the it's pressure the... would funnel to like one toilet somewhere. And it would which, got, shoot up. which got me thinking, what if every toilet on Earth was flushed at the exact same time. Think of it like a <laughs> like a global shit in. Everybody f- poop or not, but everybody flushes the toilet at the exact <laughs> same time. Would Earth implode? Yeah, the planet just, just cracks in half. There, I mean, maybe not, but something has to happen, right? Like that many <laughs> millions or billions of toilets flushing at the exact same time. It would have to have some sort of effect. What would that be? It would have to back up somewhere because all of this water is currently stored and, and it's under, it's like held up by gravity. So you've got all of gravity of all of these oh. tanks. 
just ready to drop water. <laughs> Yeah, Jeff. Interesting. Jeff is describing this like the lamest Project Mayhem. <laughs> like he doesn't, he doesn't want to blow up the financial district. He just wants every toilet to flush <laughs> at the same time. I just am curious what would happen. Like, has has anybody ever done a study? We should Google it, find out. Like, you want to do like flush across America? <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it, are there any uh, are there any like civil engineers out there that would have any idea like what the ramifications would be if if every toilet <laughs> on a system like on the same treatment facility or whatever flushed like would there be enough water to instantly return at all would it be like would it get overwhelmed and start like like would it be like in a like in a movie when like like when the, all the pipes start busting and like steam starts poshing out and like, <laughs> but it's just shit and piss everywhere you know, the, the scarecrow in a yeah. batman begins yeah exactly exactly like that <laughs> Oh. It's the lower level of the Titanic, but it's just because everybody <laughs> flushed. <laughs> exactly. I wonder if you'd be able to see it from a plane. <laughs> what what, what, do you what would it look like? Yeah, <laughs> what would you be seeing? <laughs> well, that the ground cave in, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like 20. What was that movie? 2012? Yeah. yeah. Uh. So if you're out there, if you're a comet lever, uh, and you have any insights into what would happen if uh, a million toilets cried out at once? Uh, let oh, us know. Thankfully, I cannot not, wait. not enough people listen to f face to actually cause an environmental disaster. But, I'm yeah. not trying to cause one. I just am wondering <laughs> what would happen. Like I'm not recommending this. I don't want to do this. I'm not espousing it as an idea that we should pursue. I'm just curious. Oh, I can't wait. Well, we're going to get a response back like September 1st for how far ahead we are. What a time. <laughs> Be waiting yeah. for this episode. Just about, about three weeks after we forget about it. Yes, exactly. Well, the summer's here. You know what that means. Uh, sweaty crotch, swamp ass, the living ain't easy uh, unless you got a hello tushy bidet. You want to keep your sweaty crack clean all stinky summer long? Well, you want to use the brand new Hello Tushy 3.0 Modern Bidet Attachment. It is stylish, it is eco-friendly, and your underwear will thank you. Hello Tushy 3.0 cleans soggy butts like a champ, and it doesn't stop there. It also cleans itself like a champ with the Smart Spray Automatic Self-Cleaning Nozzle. Plus, Hello Tushy's got your ass covered with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. So defeat swamp ass. Go to hellotushy.com slash face to get 10% off plus free shipping. This is a special offer for our listeners at hellotushy.com slash face for 10% off. That's hellotushy.com slash face. Our noses will thank you. Here I am uh, sharing my experience uh, as things approach normalcy. Uh, have I found myself feeling anxious and needing to calm down? Why all the time... Uh, and that's why I use Raycon wireless earbuds. Like I go for bike rides. I try to go every day, try to ride between 22 and 30. Well, it usually ends up being about 24 miles, if I'm being honest. Uh, and I, I pop those suckers in and it kind of just helps me reset, helps me work through problems I have. It's a little bit of background music, kind of uh, drown out the world, helps me center. I appreciate it. It kind of gets me back to where I need to be. But it's not just about calming down. Sometimes you need to be pumped up, too. Like, you need a badass playlist because you're about to go work out at the gym, I assume. Not me, but maybe Blaine. I know that I like to listen to uh, instrumentals, uh, really good, like, kind of like modern uh, jazz and just kind of weird stuff that just kind of helps uh, helps me surf my thoughts a little bit without being too distracted by, uh, you know, what the music is saying or trying to tell me. But let me tell you right now, Raycons are the best way to listen. They come with a bunch of gel tips for your comfort, and unlike some other brands, they don't stick out of your ears and make you look like a, I don't know, like a 1950s uh, alien. Raycons have a 32-hour battery life. I don't need, That's like, uh, well, I don't know how to count past 24, so it's, uh, it's more than a day, I'll tell you that. So you can listen to what you want, when you want, for a really long time. They start at half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good, which is awesome. You're basically paying half the price for just as good of a product. And they come with a 45-day happiness guarantee, so you really can't lose. Give them a try, and you'll see what I mean. Create your own soundtrack with Raycon. Right now, 
Face listeners can get a 15% discount off the Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash face. That's buyraycon.com slash face to save 15% off Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash face. I did a thing. I don't even know if I should talk about it. Maybe it would be satisfying if I talked about it because they will know the results before I do at this point. It will be long over. By the time they hear about this, this will be a distant thing. The Olympics start in two days. I love the Olympics. Like the spelling bee. I had people, I tweeted out about how great that spelling bee was. People were like, is this a bit? Not a bit. Spelling bee, a fantastic event. Oh, that, by the way, not, not to derail your story, but that was fun. Like, I, Gavin wasn't event. around for it, but you and I hung out and uh, we just texted all night watching the spelling bee together. And it was enthralling. I had the best time watching the spelling bee with you. It's a great event. People should watch it every year. It's a lot of fun. Even if you're not doing like ridiculous things like what my football fantasy football league does. It's just a fucking awesome event to watch these people. There were there were so many intense moments. I've never seen someone like go to spell the word and then like ask for more clarifications <laughs> on like origin and whatnot. It was intense. The person who won almost lost. It's a great thing. I was a, a social event. And I, I try not to like, spend too much time on my phone when I'm around real people. And I just had it down somewhere. And then I picked it up and there were like 175 new messages <laughs> in the group chat. It was like reading someone's live tweet from like an Apple event or something. <laughs> it was amazing. I couldn't believe what I was missing out on. There was like moments of tension in there. Oh, yeah. There were oh, predictions. It was very that- tense. Oh, was Andrew, amazing. Andrew was convinced they were icing his guy out. He was very upset about it. <laughs> I was outraged. My kid, they went to commercial break two times in a row on my kid, just icing them, just Honestly, putting the pressure on him. I feel like that was a good enough read to the point where along the same lines as a break shit stream, we should just have like a live stream reaction or commentary to an event that's going on like that. I think it would be good. Yeah. Okay. Well, that'd be do fun. That. well, I don't know. Maybe something. I don't know. We're going to Wayne stuff. But so I love the Olympics fantastic event i have gambled heavily on the olympics this year i'm excited to celebrate it i didn't have much of a strategy i just took the over for every country's medals that it would let me bet on uh so i'm cheering for everybody not gold medals i just need any medals so this is my betting list i have canada u.s australia belgium china colombia denmark finland france germany great britain japan netherlands norway spain and sweden all over the number of medals this is number of medals earned that is Why are they, how could you get half a medal? So that's it's for setting the over under, right? So yeah. by oh. putting a point five, you can't win half a medal. So it'll clearly be either above or below that number. Okay. So I'm going the over for everything. I don't know if that mathematically is even possible for all these bets to win uh, for going over. But I'm excited. This is going to be my next two weeks is watching basketball and rowing and track just be <laughs> terrified about medal placement. So if two people in Finland get bronze medal, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm all about Finland. I was like 1.5 for Finland. That seems super low. Who Who are that. you most worried about? Well, Finland, <laughs> because it's 1.5. <laughs> Dude, I had to yeah. look. They got 20 athletes in it. I'm excited, though. But by the time that people hear this, the Olympics are going to be over like a week ago. They ended <laughs> over a week at this point. So they will know if uh, I'm miserable. I wonder if Great Bitten got their 44 and a half or not. Hopefully it doesn't come down to penalty kicks, right, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> that was it's too so soon, great. man. It's too soon. <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> Just watching the misery. And I didn't even know that was happening. That I day. don't think we've talked about this in a regular f- face, but if you want to see my live reactions to England <laughs> losing the 2020 Euro <laughs> final, it's in our third, <laughs> it's in our RTX break shit stream. It's on YouTube. <laughs> oh, dear. But the timing of that, the timing of that stream, unbelievable. It was fantastic. Yeah. Couldn't ask for a better s- setup for that. That was great. <laughs> oh, there's surfing in the Olympics? Yeah. There is. And skateboarding now. How do you get a gold medal at surfing? Like, what, do you have to, what, what are they scoring you on on surfing? Uh, uh, I, don't, th- I could guess, but I guess it's form. like the, the same. It's the same way they surf in competitions. It's like complexity of the ride, uh, you know, how many moves you do. Similar to skateboarding. Yeah. Very similar to skateboarding. Okay. Yeah. I've, I just never, I've never watched competitive surfing mm-hmm. hmm. I'm, I'm jazzed about the like sports that i give a shit about being represented finally like surfing and skating and that kind of stuff obviously basketball but the uh, usa men's basketball team sucks apparently so we'll see yeah they barely made it in right yeah 1.5 I- medals for finland is nuts like if they get two bronzes yeah 
I, not only is it like I didn't put the odds on that, that was like an unlikely thing to happen. They gave favorable odds that they wouldn't get two. So, so Andrew, what are we looking at? Are if let's say if you hit every one of these, are you retiring? Not even no. I just put one unit on every bet. Okay. So it's not a huge difference either way. I need about half of them to win to make the money back that I put down. Mm. Mm. So I feel okay about it. I'm sure you will. I Yeah, we'll see. I'm just excited to be up at 3 a.m. watching some random event that I typically wouldn't care about, just yelling about metal placement. It's going to be, be great. Russian handball all over again. It will be. Yeah, I love it. It's handball in there? Handball is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. It is interesting. I'm excited. I want to get in on this if there's uh, any live discussion. Okay. Well, yeah, you're going to be, that's that the second conversation I had. You're, so you're going, you're going, you're going to foreign country. Are you going to yep. have to quarantine still at this point? Yeah. Fuck. Okay. I was hoping that'd be no. I was Why? hoping the <laughs> rules would have changed. Cool. Well, because last time you said that you're going to be stuck for four whatever days and yeah. you're just going to play outskirts. Play it outskirts. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I just wanted to see, I wanted to, if I could relax a little bit and not have to think about outskirts. I think it's actually six days. Because Fuck you. technically, if I if I test negative on the fifth day, uh, oh, I think it's like seven days because then I'll be waiting like 24 <laughs> hours for the result. But technically, the day you land is day zero. So, yeah, I'm, I'm probably a week, a week straight of outskirts. That's awful. People who are fully vaccinated don't have to quarantine, but only if they got vaccinated in the UK. <laughs> what a dumb... even, even though I got, I got shot up with the same shit. <laughs> but Weird. I don't know. It's annoying. That is a strange thing. I feel I'm still processing. I was laughing so hard. The fact that Jeff or, or Gavin, how has your day been so far today? Just a normal day? You shit your pants or anything? That's what I'm kind of getting at. Uh, pretty solid day. Yeah. I, I mean, solid I had another day. COVID test, but um, that'd be like the 70th one probably. Yeah, but I got it yesterday. That's pretty, that's pretty normal at this point. Yeah. It's an uneventful day. You and I were just living our life. Jeff had a fucking die pack go off in his house <laughs> and he built a sandcastle in his shorts. <laughs> And he's just here. I just keep processing how wildly different our days are. Yeah. And uh, not that like, like abnormal of a day for me either. It's, uh, this, I, I just no, don't always think to tell you life. all the dumb shit that happens. Because it's so commonplace. That's why I need, I need a live feed to your life. <laughs> <laughs> we have such different... Like the last kitchen disaster I had was really under I got a rice cooker like over a year ago never used it I was like ah I'm gonna I was in a weird spot of like hungry but didn't want to make a meal because it was late so I, I put the rice in did everything hit start one hour appeared I was like whatever I'll wait an hour waited an hour opened it up I was more surprised than Morgan Freeman in seven to open it up and see the <laughs> rice uncooked like it was just, it looked the exact same as I put it in. What I didn't realize is it wasn't a start button. It was a delay start button. So I clicked <laughs> delay start for one hour, sat down there, just waited, and then opened it like, ah, rice time, not even slightly cooked. It then turned on after the fact. I had to wait two hours to make <laughs> my cup of rice. It was dreadful. But it's like, it's a contained issue. I don't have shit on my walls. I don't have well, things exploding. I will say, the last time we recorded, you had a that pretty is true. intense issue with a tea kettle. The tea kettle ramen scenario was, was a <laughs> oh bad. Oh my god, I forgot about that. <laughs> I was looking at the pictures this morning. <laughs> <laughs> that was a disaster, but yeah. And I've learned, like, since then, that that's like a $200 kettle. It's a fancy that's some kettle. fancy shit. It's, it's a nice kettle. Yeah, dude, you're flexing your, your kettle flex was pretty intense. <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it a kettle flex? It's a nice kettle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I just had a pretty, pretty nice day. I was rendering footage other. It was taking ages, so I just, thought, I just thought I'd quickly watch Jurassic Park. This is yeah. a good movie. I realized I've seen that movie. I must have. Well, I saw it way more times as a kid. Maybe like I must have seen it like fifteen times. I don't think I ever realized what the movie's about or like why the movie happens because it's always uh, like a plot of a movie, right? The main plot is, you know, man, yeah, <laughs> rebirth dinosaurs and it goes against nature. Nature fights sure. back. Dinosaurs. Don't do it. Are you it. talking the mosquito thing? Like the origin of it? Is that not even that? I didn't realize that movie happens because the guy that dies at the beginning, the guy that gets sucked into the raptor pen, his family is suing the park for $20 million. Oh. And the investors are pulling out, and John Hammond needs two experts to sign off on the safety of the park. Don't think I ever paid attention no. to that. 
You could summarize no movies in a way that doesn't reveal... Well, I guess that would kind of give it away, but there's like really ignorable plot in movies. And I, I feel like I want to go through all the movies I've seen a load of times hmm. and like write down the plot of why they actually take place. I'll be honest, dude. You just blew my mind. Yeah. I yeah, no right? Idea. I've seen that movie so many times. I don't... <laughs> either it's just like the unmemorable crap like you're you're a kid you're watching it's like man i wish the helicopter would land on the freaking island we see some damn dinosaurs and you don't see any you don't really listen to any of the exposition hmm. i'm sure uh i'm sure minor league fan jack is fucking going like oh, oh my, how did you not know i can't believe it it's right there in front of you if we called jack do you think he would know now wh- yes. why jurassic park starts yes and i want somebody else to do it because i'm not going to be responsible for piping in jack again <laughs> after last time <laughs> Just tell him to get on to So you do it. I I don't. Let me see if he's on Discord right now. I'm trying to think uh, if any he other. Is... I guess I wouldn't know. Is that the most exciting legal dispute of all time as far as genres <laughs> of movies? <laughs> Name a no. more thrilling legal movie. It's a uh, lawsuit movie. Kramer versus Kramer. Liar, liar. Li- is liar, liar Ooh, thrilling? Liar, liar. That's just like uh, funny, isn't it? Glenn I've Gary, Glenn it. Ross. That's not a thrilling movie. <laughs> that is uh, dialogue heavy. There's no... The Pelican nobody... Brief. Haven't seen it. The Firm. Uh, Aaron Brockovich. What is the plot of the Pelican Brief? Fuck, I don't know, dude. I saw it when I was okay. a kid. I was just asking. I was really hoping it was like a Pelican stole a briefcase. and then they Yes, that's what it is. A Few Good Men. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. Nick Scout. My Cousin Vinny. That won an Academy Award. Excellent point, Nick. It's a good one. I just mean, <laughs> I bet you Jurassic Park is the only movie that features both a law dispute like a lawsuit and dinosaurs <laughs> <laughs> which i know is a very specific genre there's not a lot to go with but you just don't there's not a crossover you anticipate <laughs> all right i'm looking i'm gonna te- I'm, 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 let me text minor league fan jack right now oh i texted him he said in just a minute i could okay well tell him yes then fucking get his shit together andrew i'm gonna need you to i'm gonna need I just realized I'm going to need an Andrew Panton list of the most thrilling legal battles in film of all time. I don't have that. Well, I don't expect you to have it right now, but uh, but I, I expect it, you to come back with it at some point. And okay, then we can put I, it, I was thinking about it. Then we could, all these lists are perfect for the zine. That's a great point. <laughs> I forgot about the zine. That's a great uh, point. As did I. <laughs> I don't, I don't have that. I do have, I do have a new list. I do have a new ranking thing. This will come out. NFL preseason just started. NFL touchdown songs. The definitive list. I listened to all of them. Oh Some my of God. them. It's, it's, I mean, there's 32 teams. So Hail to the redacted. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's they, they changed their name, but they're too lazy to change their song. It's very clear what it is. Yeah. Oh. Number one, the next episode, which is not, that's the, the Snoop Dio motherfucking G song. I don't feel like many people relate the title of the next episode to that song. Great song. <laughs> New Orleans Saints, when the Saints go marching in, it's a shit talk type thing. Like if, if the running back goes, it's great. It's a great combination. I have a Seattle Seahawks bias. Las Vegas Raiders, Raider Nation is fine. It's an Ice Cube song. I mean, there's just, it's a lot of these are generic. I didn't know the Jacksonville Jaguars is an actual song, but I described it as sounds like when the Power Rangers form into a big robot to kick ass. That's the <laughs> vibe you get from it. I think it's called Bro Him, though. Upon further research, it was that. The Miami Dolphins is a wild one. Uh, they use their fight song, which they made in like the 70s, and they just lie to their fans every time they score. It's like Miami Dolphins are number one. They always think about winning a Super Bowl. They're the best team that's ever existed. I struggled to find a thing that the Dolphins were number one at. Just in any way. Any. I lost Andrew. I lost Andrew too. I thought I, I thought I lost me and I was about to be like, <laughs> God damn it. Because I just, I was explaining to them before you got on, I had my internet fixed yesterday and the guy, it took about three and a half hours and I'm reasonably certain that nothing improved. Ah. Wait. <sighs> So I've been, you know, I, I lose Wait, you guys for about a minute at a time sometimes, but it hasn't happened today. Also, uh, Andrew just told me something Wait. while he's gone. I'm going to cover for him. Jacksonville Jaguars song number eight, uh, Bro Him. When he said that, I recognized that song. That's a song by a punk band called Pennywise, a SoCal punk back? band oh, from the cover? 90s. No, it's a song. Like, I'm assuming the Jaguars are using the actual Am punk rock song Bro hey, Him. Hey, Andrew's back. Hey, I'm back. Where did I get? Where? When did I disconnect? What You're, happened? Because we, I you kept were talking going. about the Dolphins, but dude, you said "Bro Him," so like, yes, the punk rock song "Bro Him" by the band Pennywise. That's a great song. 
It is. But the Detroit Lions song I would recommend is fantastic. If you're going to listen to one touchdown song, listen to the Detroit Lions touchdown song. It is wonderful. It sounds like the band was like in the arena and they're watching the game and they missed the touchdown. And the only guy on alert was the horn guy because it's just like <laughs> and then a pause and then a second one and then a third one. And then a band kicks in with like three seconds left into the song. So it's just like imagining the horn guy just yelling like, my God, please get to the drums. Somebody do something. I can't hold this myself. And then like the music comes in at the last second. It's great. It's yeah, up there. It's a shitty. Yeah, exactly. It sucks as a song, but just the context or the vibe that it gives you is why it ranks so high it is really dumb it's a fantastic song i read that um there's a lot of la sports teams across multiple sports who always yes. play i love la by randy newman at sporting events <laughs> uh-huh. but but that song is about how much la sucks isn't it yeah. <laughs> isn't that a song that's like this look all this shit stuff that's in la it's like an ironic song i feel like maybe they don't understand it I, yeah i can't believe you ranked prince's let's go crazy as number 30 well, because it's like the way it's mixed, you got to understand that these oh, are mixed. These aren't just the songs. It sounded like I couldn't tell what it was initially. I thought, wait oh. a second, are the Vikings doing the DuckTales theme as their touchdown song? Because that would be quite the move. And it's Let's Go Crazy by Prince. That's not a judgment of the song. It's how it's used for the touchdown. Makes sense. Thank you for the clarification. A song in an EA sports game that you've never heard outside of it. <laughs> yeah. And if you hear that, that's exactly. If you played EA sports games, you would get that vibe as well. What's fascinating... <laughs> is Green Bay, the Colts, and the Bengals all have the same touchdown song, which is that um, I don't want to go to work. I just want to bang on my drum all day. That's their yeah. touchdown song. Is that why you've written drum banging original asterisk? Yes. Yeah, so so what you listen to it, and the first two I heard, it was the Bengals and the, the Packers, and they just have an instrumental track of it. They don't have any lyrics. The Colts have like a horn at the beginning, they include the lyrics and they remix it a little bit. So it became a question of who used it first. Was it the Colts and then the other two swooped in? Because I think teams somewhat frequently change their touchdown song. It's not something that a lot of teams necessarily are married to. But it's as I guessed, the Colts, it's like when you try to copy your friend's homework and you just mm -hmm. make the minimal amount of changes. So it's not recognizable. <laughs> they stole the Packers song in like 2014, which was that. And they just slightly edited it. So it'd be a little bit unique, <laughs> but it's just the song. It's a lot of history. The Miami Dolphins fight song, this sort of like random tangent. The guy that wrote it got like no credit for it. And he's now a defense attorney in Tennessee. And he should have a is movie. the creator of one of the most iconic like, he got his band together, they recorded it, sent a bunch of demos out in Miami, waited a few months, he called his friend, like, hey, have you heard a song called Miami Dolphins Number 1? <laughs> and his friend was like, if I hear that song one more time, I'm going to kill somebody. He had no <laughs> idea that the song was getting any play. It was the biggest song in Miami, and he just had no clue. Nobody would believe that he wrote the song. It was so iconic. Like, he That's told his so friend, annoying. I wrote that, and his friend was like, you're full of shit. There's no <laughs> way, because you're just a random musician. In the middle of L.A., there's no way you created the Miami Dolphins iconic song. So we had to fly to Miami and buy a record of it to show proof that this is my name. I made this song. The Dolphins wouldn't do shit for him. They refused to pay for it. They're like, we're just going to continue to use it. We're not even going to recognize you. So he said, fuck you, Miami. And he went to Houston and he re-recorded the same song and tried to sell it to the Houston Oilers, which is now a defunct franchise. <laughs> And it sounds slightly different. And you think like, oh, he did it because he wanted a musical change. What happened was he hired a bunch of musicians who all showed up stoned and they brought the wrong instrument. So he just like made do with what they had. So there's a random horn in it because this the guy brought life. a horn for some reason. It's absurd. It's an absurd time. But he was able to sell it to the Oilers, but then they died. So all he's made is like $1,500. From this song all he got oh. from miami was two game tickets he got free tickets to a game in the 90s that's all the compensation nobody knows who he is but he wrote one of the most iconic football songs that is played every time miami scores at home since like the 70s what's this person's name yeah what that's is the thing i don't remember <laughs> it's the least memorable <laughs> name of all time I, I forgot all this effort it's like this guy deserves the recognition don't, he yeah, does. don't bother remembering his name though no <laughs> 
I've read like four stories on the guy. I've tried. I can't remember his name. It's the, it's the opposite of the basket weaver whose name you knew, but you didn't know <laughs> yeah. anything else about him. I know everything about him, but his name. <laughs> what, you, you want to guess it? Or <laughs> uh, it's, uh, e- I, f- I feel like it might be Igor. We're going to go with an <laughs> Igor. Igor. Patterson. Igor Patterson. <laughs> Guess the writer. so much more insulting considering we live in a time where you could find out in one second online. Faster oh. than it took you to make up a name, probably. Probably. I, th- I, th- I will say, uh, by the way you're describing life continually kicking this guy in the dick, I feel like I'd get along really well with him. He sounds like a real Jeff. Yeah. Lee Offman is his name. Igor. <laughs> I was close. Igor Patterson. Lee Offman. Almost the same amount of letters in the first name. Lee is a short name. Igor, only four. I feel like I was relatively close. I remembered it was a short name. <laughs> Igor. <laughs> Igor. <laughs> That's the same as being like, oh, what was his name? I think, um, Frankenstein, I think. Oh, Jim. <laughs> Shit. I was close though. <laughs> no, those are, com- the, the letter count in those names are way off. I was only sure. one letter off. <laughs> one. Two syllables versus one, though. Big deal. That's true. That's a good point. If I would have got the syllable count, that would have been an icing or a cherry. Not an icing. You always have icing on the cake. It's the cherry on the top of the sundae. Well, icing on the cake is also a, a phrase. Yeah. Yeah, but it like, it, well, I guess there are icingless cakes now, right? Aren't they called naked <laughs> cakes? All, there always have been. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I feel like they're more popular than they used to be. This, this technology has moved on. Yes. Icing has retreated from the cakes. It has. Well, there's naked cakes now, and there's still icing on them, I guess, but it's like the side. Or is there icing on a naked cake? I'm not crazy. You know what I'm talking about? Like, it's in the middle layers, but it's not on the sides. I've made one. I made one years ago. Yeah, well, like the top and in the middle, if you're doing a layered cake. Yeah, I, mean, I just feel like if it's, if it's on the sides, it's definitely on the top as well. It's not like nobody makes a cake like fry a top's <laughs> head. <laughs> <laughs> I want a fried tuck cake. <laughs> I, would, I would honestly, I would eat the shit out of that. I feel like the ratio of icing to sponge would be great. Oh, man, I'm not, I'm not a big icing guy. I'm a big icing guy. I want. I'll tell you what. You can have the fryer tuck. I'll just have the icing that you shave off the top of his head. <laughs> What's the whole point? It comes without the neat. You'd have to just eat the back of his head. That's right. I'll eat the back of his head. Yeah. I'll eat, I'll eat his face. <laughs> I just want the back of Friar Tuck's head. That's all I want. You can have the face. Larry David kick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, so Jack's still not showing up. Maybe he's doing his normal <sighs> level of face attendance. Hustle? Yeah. It's a, it's a standard face hustle. I, oh, uh, well, if this is the case, then I assume if it's going to go SOP with him, then I'll probably be getting hit up in a couple of seconds to leave this podcast to go work on annual pass for a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> When's our next break shit? Uh, I was asking Eric that this morning. I would like to know because I would like to start planning for it. Early August is what I requested. So hopefully somewhere in there, but sometime in August for sure. All right. I, I don't know if it'll be when you're in town or not, Gavin, but I'll try to, I'll try to schedule it so that you're around. Well, maybe um, Andrew could be there in person and I'll be in the TV. Ooh. Well, we could do that. That'd well, I mean, we, we need to give Andrew a, a couple weeks notice to start the trip. It's true. <laughs> it's not a fast <laughs> trip for Andrew. <laughs> go now. Go, go, go. Go now. <laughs> go, go now. Just jumps onto a ferry. Oh, I'm trying to figure out what I want the tag. Like, I, I'm not I'm deciding if I just wanted to say go, go now, or if it should say go, go now, and then have a boat sticking half out of the water. <laughs> Ooh. I think oh. it's definitely oh. a boat. Oh, hello. Hello. Hey, minor league fan Jack, welcome <laughs> to the podcast. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's, a, it's a, an honor to be here. It's nice to have you through Discord and not through Jeff's phone, uh, through his mic. Again. <laughs> I swear to God, I was actually there. <laughs> You couldn't hear me. I don't know what was going on, but I was there. Yeah, I, I heard it later in the in the recording. Jack, quick question for you. Shoot. Uh, what's Jurassic Park about? Jurassic Park is a movie about a, um, a scientist who creates dinosaurs and then a gentleman who turns them into a theme park based around those dinosaurs. Yep. Okay. But but why does it? Why? Why does the what, movie? What's the point of the movie? What's the plot of the movie? 
Like what? Why? I mean, yeah, I would argue the point of the movie is that uh, don't mess with nature and nature finds a way. And yeah. Uh, yeah. And the, the plot of the movie is uh, the, the everything looks good, but no, nature found a way and they replicated and then destroyed everything. But why does the movie happen when it happens? <laughs> Uh, can you rephrase that question, please? What's the inciting like, incident for things to go wrong? What causes the events of the movie? Uh, a uh, Nedry, the hacker, it shuts down the power. And because of that, <laughs> the, the, the walls go down and the dinosaurs get out and start eating people. Why is Why Alan are the Grant characters there? there? <laughs> Alan Grant and Ellie Slater and or, excuse me, Ellie Sattler and Ian Malcolm are there to basically give their thumbs up of approval on it because the lawyers were pissed off because people had died. And so Hammond needed someone to basically kind of give a, a thumbs up on the, the whole park to be like, oh, it's safe and it's great. And so he brought them in because he was funding their dig in Wyoming, I believe, or Montana. And so he's like, I know them and I can fund your dig for further. If you come, give me a thumbs up. And that's why they were there. Totally shit. Jeff, he knew more right. than you did, Gavin. Holy shit. Yep. And I feel like it's Gavin's fault for how he phrased the qu- he phrased it horribly like six times in a row. Well, that was why I didn't I didn't want to give to I didn't want to like get I didn't want to give anything away and like the information no. we were after. I was hoping that it would just eventually get there. I just but there's more a, specific. There's a line between not giving it away and actually asking what you're asking. You asked like six <laughs> different questions that were unrelated to what you're. I was point. just trying to get closer and closer <laughs> to the reason the movie oh, stopped. Oh man. Say, Jack, Gavin watched Jurassic Park today, and he discovered that the movie was about something he never realized. And he was explaining to us about the $20 million lawsuit over the guy that got sucked up by the Raptors and how uh, they brought Ian and the others on to, to basically certify that it was safe. And I said, if anybody on Earth knows that, it's you. I was just blown away, Jack, that I'd seen that movie about 15 times, but I never really knew that was the reason the, the movie events start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that's the whole the whole point of it is Gennaro, the the lawyer, is there, and he's like, we got to get people to sign off on it. And uh, yeah, there you go. There's, I bet there are very few people on earth who remember <laughs> that the lawyer's name is Gennaro. Gennaro. <laughs> you are in the top point zero one percent of Jurassic Park fans, probably. Oh, uh, thank! I'm a Jurassic Park super fan too. I guess. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, Robert Mul, what's his name? Muldoon. Robert Muldoon. Yeah, he's the the, the warden, the game warden. Yeah. Where, where did John Hammond find him? Oh, was it in a like an African safari, I think, is where he found him? It was. It was from Hammond's Park in Kenya. Damn, he knows his shit. Jack, who wrote the Miami Dolphins fight song? <laughs> <laughs> the same guy who wrote the uh, Country Road song. Oh, that's great. John Denver. He nailed it. <laughs> if you would have known that, Jack, I would have left. That, you would have blown my mind. Nobody knows his name. I don't even know his name. I've read six stories about the guy. I can't remember his name. His name's Igor Patterson, right? That's what we determined. <laughs> I remember that. I don't even remember. We just said his name. I don't remember what it is. I just remember Igor. All right, Jack. All thanks, right. For, uh, thanks for proving Jeff right. And uh, thanks for blowing my mind. All right. Yeah, appreciate it, Jack. Absolutely. Talk to you later. Big fan of the show, you guys. Love you guys. Thanks, Jack. There Bye, you Jack. Go. That was uh, minor league fan Jack. He didn't He didn't leave. No, like, he's, we, still, he's, just, he's here. He's we, hanging out. Did he leave on his end? Did he just close the app? Because he was on his phone. I think he just closed the app. And he just walked away from his phone. He's still there. Maybe he just wanted I to wonder if what he... You guys need me to leave now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, love you. Bye. 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 I love you. Bye. I wonder yeah. if whenever he's done talking oh. on the phone, he's like, all right, mom, I'll see you later. And then he just <laughs> he puts just his phone it. down fully yeah. on and just goes to another room. Walks away. <laughs> Oh, oh. Jack, Jack really knows his shit with that movie. Yeah, he does. Hey, Henry found the squeaky toy again. That's cool. <laughs> I forgot about Henry. The squeaky toy, Jeff, you were trying to shush it, but in your Ocean Rescue story, it was really, it added a lot to it. <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> it was so funny. It was just distracting me. I was trying so hard <laughs> not to forget the different elements of the story. Nick says that was the cherry on top. <laughs> and Andrew would that say was it was the, the icing, icing on the cherry. <laughs> <sighs> oh man by the way uh my girlfriend the other night she gave me she asked me <laughs> about something and she gave me the look <laughs> and it was uh she didn't have to she didn't say anything but with her eyes uh i very clearly got the message to get these fucking bats out of our house <laughs> oh okay so i gotta do something about these goddamn bats i asked yesterday or the other day to get more <laughs> tags because we we determined last time we recorded that we have elements of a lot of ideas but not enough to do any one of them so hopefully those will come in soon and then uh gavin will come over and cut 100 bats while i watch <laughs> So just to recap, you have 100 bats and 900 knobs? Correct. 
and a thousand metal tags. <laughs> I like, I just still love oh. the fact that someone just bought everything in our discussion. Didn't like yeah. worry about what we'd settled on. It was like, well, they talked about this. They talked about this. They suggested this. I'll just buy all of that. Now I've got everything. In their defense, I mean, I'm, I've been so confused for so long, I don't know that I gave <laughs> any kind of correct instructions on what we wanted, because I don't remember. I'm, I'm so fucking far gone with these bats, man. I just want them out of my life. And they haven't even started yet. I like that they fucked with you more by doing what was said than Gavin and I ever did by implying the bats were manipulated some way. They've caused way more yeah. just annoyance. Yeah, this is oh, real yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at them right now. <laughs> They've become a permanent shelf in my library <laughs> for me to store stuff on. This is, this, we're probably not going to record for a bit at this point. I mean, I know we're not, the break shit thing will happen, but we're probably at least two weeks. I'd assume I'm going to miss you guys. I'm going to miss you too. Yeah, I think we just need to stay in touch. Um, it's going to be a lot of excitement for him to come back. It's well, multiple layers of like, we need to stay in touch because I love you guys, but also just to make sure Jeff is still alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like it goes back and forth between Andrew and Jeff on like who's more in danger. Because sometimes oh. there have been times where Andrew's just like dropping pints of blood out of his ass and I'm actually worried that he's going to die. And now at the moment it's just gone Jeff's way. So It's very different though because I feel like Jeff's danger comes when he's going to look at sharks. Mine is I ordered pancake mix and then just everything <laughs> fell apart my life. <laughs> It's the mundane that gets me. I look, I just got my tetanus shot, so I'm feeling pretty safe right now. <laughs> You're going to be climbing over so many fences, not worrying about it. <laughs> Andrew, I think we need to start booking in the dates for when you're going to try the marathon, though. I feel like it's never good when a bit is discussed Here. and never happens. Like we should no, try agree. and make it happen. I completely agree. This is the redemption year. It's going to happen. Yeah. I've been very vocal on this. Actually, when did the I redemption found, year start? Twenty is that just uh, the beginning of the year? You know, it was, it, no, it started when this ep podcast turned two years old. Whenever that was. So episode what, 50, 53, 54? Well that'd be one year. When did I declare? Sure, yeah. Well, yeah, we're going into our second year though. Yeah. Yeah, we're in the year first two. The, the first year, yeah. We're going into the second year, year two of so year two, two year two. Year two is like Redemption Island. It is. Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. Man, I just started season 35 of Survivor and talk about the dumbest premise yet. It What's is that premise? Heroes versus healers versus oh, hustlers. It's a great season. It's a good season so far, but what a dumb concept. <laughs> heroes versus healers versus hustlers? <laughs> what? <laughs> they really they do run out of premises pretty quickly. God damn. They eventually just start calling it island names. Like like Gavin said, Redemption Island. Like they move away from like the group <laughs> premises and are just like, this is an island about redemption. <laughs> We're going to call this island Ghost Island. <laughs> or what is it uh, uh, like uh, when they uh, when they uh, uh, like uh, when they ban them to the island by themselves? Uh, Exile Island. That's Exile Island. Yeah. yeah, you got Exile Island. There later, there's a later season called Island of the Idols. And oh, so people, come on. Are, people are like. Oh shit, are there like a million idols on this island? They go one at a time. Like somebody has to go to the island of the idols. It's not it's not idols. They just got Boston Rob and Sandra hanging out on a different beach <laughs> and they're like, "How's it going in your game?" And then they give them tips and then oh, they offer them playing? challenges. No, they're not playing. They just coexist <laughs> on a different like island. Quest givers. Yeah, yeah they're they, the idols. They did that last the NPCs. year. NPCs. Uh, like Cochrane was hanging out on a boat giving advice. Yeah, that was yeah. <laughs> that's a random reward where Cochrane shows up and is like, What's yeah. in it for them though? Like those people, like Boston Rob's Money. only good because he's trying to Money. win. Money. Oh, Money. for the players? So, okay, this is how it works. It is great. So you get there, right? And Rob will be like, there's one, the first one I remember. <laughs> Boston Rob is like, I'm really good at making fire. Do you know how to make fire? I'm going to teach you how to make fire. And then so they go through the process of teaching the person and then they'll offer them a challenge. So Boston Rob was like, I'll give you, I don't know, a second vote at a tribal council if you can make fire faster than me. But if you can't, then you lose your vote at the next tribal. And then they're like going back and forth. And Rob is like, you know, it's a big move having two votes. It could be a real game changer. Got to evaluate your thing. He eventually convinces the person to do it. They lose miserably. 
And then it just goes to a confessional of him going like, they're the dumbest person alive. Why would they challenge me? They didn't know how to make fire. I taught them. How would they ever beat me at this? It's a really dumb premise. They have them hiding Gavin in a little spy shack at Tribal Council. They sit above it and do commentary of what's happening. Terrible season. Matt, after Jeff called you Russell Hans, I went on a bit of a Russell Hans uh, tour oh, through the season. One seasons. of the most insulting things that he was ever said. <laughs> boy, is that an insult. And also, boy, does that guy's game not work if anyone has seen him play. Jesus. <laughs> it's thrilling. He was so lucky doing back-to-backs. He was. Yeah, he was. He went on Survivor Australia, first one voted out. Did not last long. <laughs> That's true. So, just That's true. immediately gone. Something I was looking at, though, is like, I guess they do like two at a time sometimes on Survivor. Yeah. Does that mm-hmm. mean that Russell was sat there in the final? Well, this is a spoiler for Survivor. It is. Russell was sat there in the final of Survivor, knowing that he'd already gone out again and got to the final of the other mm-hmm. one, but had to do that entire season talking about his previous season, not knowing whether he'd won it or not. Yeah, you blew my mind because I knew this going in that the whole thing they talk about constantly in Heroes versus Villains, which is a second season that none of them had the chance to see him play, and he was kind of this unknown variable, which is largely why I think he has success in that game. Uh, it never occurred to me that he would have done both, been in the finale for both, expecting to win $2 million, like you <laughs> pointed out, and win zero. He didn't make a dime from playing Survivor. It's and terrible. I watched the one where he cried. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's Redemption Island. And then we got stuck with his nephew for two seasons. Oh, I haven't got to that yet. <laughs> You guys are watching this show like you're popping in and out season to season. I've watched it live every season since it came out. I had to deal with the Hans family for like five years. (laughs) Yeah. Five consecutive years of Hans. It's a long clip. It's Uh, a long. They really they they try to get the most out of out of the Hans family. Yeah, we probably shouldn't talk about Survivor too much on this because there's sure. so many people who haven't seen it. But yeah, I would love like great. an offline <laughs> Survivor conversation at one point. I'm I'm so oh. into it. I want to do like a Survivor fan podcast, kind of like Rose Buddies for Bachelor. I've been been trying to promote that or trying to throw that idea towards Trevor for a while. I don't know if we'll ever get to do that. I don't know if there'd be any I'd audience love- for it. But if you're a comment no. leaver and you want to listen to us talk about Survivor, let us know. Maybe we'll make a Survivor podcast. Andrew would have to be in it because he's like the world's Survivor authority. It's bizarre to me because I'm one of the things, the pandemic, people started watching Survivor for some reason, maybe because it was added to Netflix was an entry point. But I've lived most of my life not being able to talk to anybody about Survivor and just watching it constantly. It's maybe my favorite show. I love Survivor. It's a staple of my life as far as entertainment goes. Dude, it's all I've watched for the last 15 seasons, like the last six weeks. That and Housewives, you know, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, obviously. The other thing Gavin did that blew my mind is he had watched like five or six seasons. He somehow hadn't seen Boston Rob play Jeff. And he's Are you like, serious? He, yeah, he's like, what season is Boston Rob on? And I'm like, season five, season nine, season 20, season 22. Like he's in six or seven seasons. Yeah. It's amazing that you avoided somehow. A Boston Rob season. That'd be hard to do. What one am I on now? I'm on one where uh, it's... Dude, he so half-assed my birthday cameo. That's great. <laughs> Boston <laughs> Rob? <laughs> yeah. Do you still have it? It's so good. Yeah, I think so. I have, uh, I have him and Coach. <laughs> Coach's was like an hour. <laughs> he just that, that checks out. Can you get probes? I don't know. I would recommend in a not serious way, Boston Rob wrote one of the worst self-help books I've ever read. I haven't read many. But it's an atrocious <laughs> book. And, uh, is it bad it's, advice? It's not bad advice. It's every chapter is about three pages long. And then he does a summary at the end of every chapter where it's like three statements that cover all of it. And it's the same structure of like real statement, joke statement, heartfelt statement for everything. And it's just it's unnecessary. It's called the Boston Rob rule book. Uh, it's available anywhere online. Like you can get it. You can Apple store, whatever. You can buy it digitally. I think he would be a great guest for this if we ever did it. Oh, I'd love it. He's a fascinating guy. Yeah, for he sure. Is. It's interesting. It's also interesting how personally people take that game. There are people from his seasons that have not forgiven him for how he played. <laughs> <laughs> I, I this is so I was taught me that like if you win something, you just shouldn't do it again. Like there's. <laughs> What's this guy? What's this guy's name? JT or something? JT. Who, appa- who apparently won once, but I've yeah. only seen him just completely 
not understand how to use idols. Like he yeah. gave one to Russell and then he went home with another one. It's like, <laughs> this guy should never have come back. I can't believe yeah, but he Yeah, like was. Sandra won twice, right? She did, but she like plays the game where like she gets there by the end because nobody views her as a threat. She's like a quiet Philip. Yeah, yeah. And her yeah. strategy, it's the most. So JT has a phenomenal seasons. I'd recommend watching uh, Token Teams, um, whatever. I think that's like season probably 18 would be my guess. He becomes most iconic for later. And my my favorite later JT moment and of all the seasons, he gets into a fight with somebody over sugar. They won like a <laughs> coffee set at a reward. Yeah. And he's like, she keeps eating all the fucking sugar. I'm sick of this person and their sugar consumption. It was so Michaela, some, I think. Yeah, yeah Michaela was eats clearly the like joking around when she was like, oh, yeah. seven drops of coffee and a spoonful of sugar. She yeah, was she's just a having joke. a good time. JT's furious. So then Sandra just ate all of the sugar in the dish and then did like the gym <laughs> from the office face, knowing that JT would see it and be like, Michaela ate the fucking sugar. It's such it a totally good moment. Totally totally worked too there's, there's like a yeah. perfect pull focus to sandra who just nails the lens it's like quite <laughs> unlike great. most shots in survivor but they clearly left it in because it was yeah. like the cameraman must have been like oh my god that was <laughs> perfect so good yeah oh my god what do you think the best season of survivor is that's such a okay mm, that's a long question we should wrap up i guess it really depends on what you're looking for so like there's sort of an arc i recommend that you started at the beginning of the russell season because that Russell, whether you like him or not, changed the game dramatically. I love uh, him. I loved him. Highly entertaining to watch. Wasn't in game changes there. Uh, no, but like the, the I just argue that eighty percent of that cast wasn't a game changer. It's a terrible. Dude. It's a really weird cast. <laughs> that was a good season. Though. I uh, no, don't, no spoilers. I'm still on that one. Still okay. On that one. I just finished it two days ago. Okay. Game changer. Well, that is uh, who's like is Zeke on that season and Andrea. Ze Zeke and is on it. Andrea. And Aub Aubrey's on it. Uh, Game changes like Haley. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ty, Ty is on it. Sierra is on it. Um, oh, it's both Sierras. Have you seen Beauty Brains and Brawn? Yeah. That's a yeah. great the the thing with Scott Pollard and Ty. What a vote. Oh, with oh, a yeah. super idol. Yeah, with the super idol where he's like, you gonna give it to me? And Ty's just like, nah. And Scott's like, really? And he's like, yep. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so, did, so, Gavin, oh, you so said you, you're on that season right now, so you have you seen where Sari, have you seen the, the, the vote with Sari where she tries to use the idol? Or she tries no. to use the advantage? Seems okay. like a spoiler. Yeah. Well, I won't, I won't, not really, no I just won't, I just, won't spoil yeah. it for you, but it's an iconic moment in Survivor. We should wrap this up. Yeah, we should wrap this up and then uh, <laughs> probably pitch some sort of Survivor podcast so we can just make that. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, well this is us stopping. <laughs> Sorry if you don't watch Survivor. That was probably yeah. insanely boring last 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you should try it. If you haven't, try it. It's on Netflix. If you're in the US, it's on Amazon. I only started watching it because y'all talked about it and then I was bored. Yeah, I, I don't know. How, how do you watch it outside of the US? That's um, a great question. It's on. I, don't know. I watch it. I watch it across Netflix, Hulu, and Paramount Plus. So if any of those are available outside the US, I don't yeah, know. but all of those have like different libraries. Sure, sure. I don't know what Par like. Yeah, Paramount Plus is available in Canada. Paramount Plus has all the seasons. It's the only service that has everything. Okay, that I'm aware of. The app's a real piece of shit, though. I'm not a huge fan. Yeah, so far. I can't wait to get you guys into the challenge after Survivor. That that's gonna oh. be. Mm. I'm uh, I'm ready to go, buddy. So I got like uh, what five more seasons of Survivor. That should take me another two weeks, and then I'm. It's I'm sad. I've I've realized there's not enough time left in my life to watch all of the television that I want to. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. there's too much reality TV that's been made, and I don't have enough time left on Earth to get through it. <laughs> I'm dude. I think I'm. I think I'm not for the first time since they came out. I think I'm gonna skip this season's Love Island. I just haven't have haven't had the time to jump into it, and I'm getting way far behind. So I think I'm just, I might be off the Love Island train because there's just no time. Great Sad. time to start the challenge. I think it starts next week, new season. Well, I have to watch 25 seasons to catch up. That is true, sure. because unlike Survivor, the challenge uses the same cast every season. <laughs> so it's great. Just dumb, dumb, trashy people trying to be political. And I have not seen that show, but I have seen X on the Beach, and I'm sure I think a lot of them are from that show. So yep. it'll be interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, we still seem to be talking, uh, though we all agreed to stop a while ago. Uh, Nick is now is now posting the Discord as Eric. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe. See you next time. 
Rate five stars. Find us on Instagram. Goodbye. I like wrestling. Me. That's my hair. <laughs>